Hello, welcome to today's class. Today we will be talking about the concept of spatial reasoning. So we will try to understand how to translate a 2D image into a three-dimensional image. So basically if I say I have a paper like this, okay, and I want to make a cube out of it. So I can say I am trying to make a rectangle here and this is how a two-dimensional image can be converted into a three-dimensional image. So here we would be talking about some of the basic concepts that we would need to understand for converting any figure to three dimensional. There are few things that we must take into account while talking about this. Is firstly understanding the angles, the lines, or objects. Okay. The next would be take important okay then you have understanding the relative orientation or finally is where practical uh, sessions or uh, for example if i have a question like this where this is a piece of paper and this piece of paper i'm trying to convert it into a three so i can do a practical session by means of paper folding Okay, so what I can do here is I can cut a piece of paper and fold it accordingly and see what it will form. So as we can see here you have a small section of square. Okay, this section would go up here. This section would turn here and this would go here. So this would form a small cube. Okay, and this remaining will form a big cube. So we can directly see here the correct answer would be B. So this we are taking by means of uh, understanding the lines and the objects here. We can also do the same experiment by means of paper folding. Now when we talk about this, what we are trying to understand here is the concept of paper folding or uh, what is exactly being transformed. So we can see here if I have a piece of paper here and this is on the top so this would go this way okay this would again go that way so that would be the next piece and you would have a kind of basically a cube that would be formed in this section made by these four elements okay when we try to rotate the like this, it would form the top section of the small cube. So top section of the small cube can be only found in the choice B. Therefore, we can say choice B is the correct option. Now here is a similar question. Now here there is a single notch. Now this shows two notches, one and two. So this cannot be the answer. C also shows two notch, one and two. So this cannot be the answer. Now you have a single notch and that too at the joint of the fold. So this joint should be present in the center of the notch. So if I say this is the notch, this should be. So same Y shape is replicated here. Okay. So by estimating the lines and the angles, we can say A is the correct option. This you can also do by means of paper folding, but this can this specific question can be done just by means of uh, imagination. So you have one, two, and three lines here, okay? So as we can see here, you have a Y-shaped pattern that is coming up. And that Y-shaped pattern is very obvious in choice A, okay? So therefore, choice A is the correct option. Now we have covered this now. Let's talk, uh, let's talk about similar questions where we are trying to find, find out the odd man out. So we have the next set here. In this, there are four choices that are given and we have to find out which of the following is an odd choice or a different choice from the remaining three. So you have the four choices here. If I deeply observe, uh, all of them show A in different angles. So length of this A and A, if I draw A in this manner, for example, I'm taking section and the length of this section. So this is same. Here again, it's same for both. 
Here again, it's same for both. But in the first case, we can see that this distance, this distance is much more as compared to this distance. Okay. So what the A here is trying to show is a kind of this A. While rest all show a kind of A which is formed by equal lens of flex. So this is a kind of unequal position. So this would be the odd man out. Okay. Now let's understand a next example of the similar question. So here you have the next question. Now in this, you have a kind of similar shapes in all the four. Okay. But what you have to see is again nicely observe the phenomena. Here I can say this length is more than this length. Again, this length is more than this length. Here this length and this length are almost equal. And here again, this length is much more than this length. Therefore, I can say choice C is the odd man out because in this choice, the length of both uh, the both these sections are same, while in all three, the length is different. This is more. Okay, only in choice C, you have a kind of equal length for both of them so one and two both are equal in length as compared to one and two here which are different in length okay now the next would be uh, i'll be just showing you the question once here so you get an idea what we are trying to do so here is the question okay so here what we have to do is you are given a cube Okay, the arrangement of the cube. Okay, based on this arrangement, you are given three sides. So this is this hidden side is the side A, this is side C, and this is side B. All these three sides are hidden. So you have to find what would be the correct side for A, B, and C when they are hidden, and you have a set of choices here. So to solve this question, we'll try to take a practical session here. So let's understand. So this diagram that we have drawn here shows us figure that I have shown you in the previous diagram. So you have two small partitions here. You have one, two, and three partitions here. And two small partitions here. Now this side is the side A that is hidden. This is the side C that is hidden and this is the side B that is hidden. Now how can we understand this? I have a kind of nice game from kids section. So you have a diagram which you can see is similar to this. Uh, I should say this. Okay. So you have two lines that are vertical here. Okay. You have orange and yellow. Then you have two top lines that's brown and uh, yellow again. And you have two vertical lines that's brown and yellow again. Now, of these three lines, as I can see, this is the diagram. Now I have to find out this side, that is the side A, lying onto the back of it, then side C lying onto the bottom, and side B from a side view. Now let's understand the first side, side A, which is hidden here. So let me about turn it for So you can see this is the shape wheel here. So if I draw it out here. It would be something like, I can say uh, exactly this shape. So I would be first drawing this shape and I will be joining this shape. So this is the A section that was hidden. So I have so this, this, and this. Okay. And then you have these two here. Okay. And that is hidden. Okay, now we will be talking about the C sign that is on the bottom. So here there is the C sign. So C sign we can see there is, I have used two small pieces, but basically it's one piece. So you have one, two, three and four partitions here. It would be very clear 
you have four vertical partitions. So you have what? So you have one, two, three, and four partitions. And then finally you have the side side view. So you have one big partition here and two small partitions that would look from here. So let's assume this as a even surface. Could be a kind of big partition. Okay, and two small partitions. So you have one and two. So with this, we understand the first part of this question. So let me repeat it here. So we took this diagram into consideration okay, this way. Okay. So we have two vertical partitions, then two partitions and two partitions here. Now I want to see the hidden sides. So it's based on imagination. So we'd be considering this back side the, and this side. So let me about tell it for you. So this would be side A that we have drawn. So you have considered this as one and this as one because there are two small pieces that I am drawing. So this would be similar vertical four lines. Okay. And then side C. That is this side. So you can see this would be a kind of big block, and there would be two small lines that would be visible on top of this. So with this, we understand the first example. Now move, let's move on to the second example. So you move to the second example. So here I have a nicely arranged set of cubes. Again, four vertical cubes: one, two, three, and four. So let me start with one, two, three, and four. So you have red, green, yellow, and red. And then you have one vertical cube, which is covering nearly two cubes here. Okay. So this would be blue. So this is the blue part of the cube that we are showing. Now when we are seeing this, I want to see the hidden sides. So back side is A again, the bottom is C, and this side is B. So let me first draw the side A. So if I about turn it for you, this is the side A that we are drawing. So if I draw here side A, what it would be basically, it would be four vertical lines. So you have four vertical columns here. So one, two, three, and four with a small, this blue section which you can see, the print is placed here. So it's a vertical line here. So this would be covering nearly two sections. So this is the side A that we were seeing from the, so this was the original section as seen here. So if I want to see the side A, I have to reverse it. So this would be the side A. Now, I'll be looking onto the side C. So here is side C, you have one big piece and one small piece. So side C, which is the bottom part, would be one big piece and one small piece. And finally you have the side B, which is this. Okay, so this would be two small lines and one big piece. So you have one big piece and two pieces. So you have this one big piece, which is this, and you have two small pieces, which are these. So let me bring closer this piece. So this was the original diagram, as you can see in the figure on the back. Okay. Now, when we are trying to see this diagram, we are trying to understand three sides which are hidden. So the back side, that is side A, the bottom side, that is side C, and this side, which is side B. So let me demonstrate one by one. So let me do this way. So this is the side C, as you can see here. So you have one big piece here, okay? Then let me do it for side B, side A. So this is side A. You have four vertical columns, one, two, three, four. Okay, for four vertical six and a small section here, and finally for side B. So this is this. So you have one big piece, one big piece followed by two small sets here. So one and two. So with this, we cover the concepts of understanding two-dimensional to three-dimensional object. As we suggested previously, we can use various techniques. We can either use a, a real uh, imagination set as we do it in the cases of blocks. 
we can either use a real paper to fold it and see what is the real shape and what are the back and the front sides. We would be practicing more similar questions on dice uh, in the next class. So stay tuned for that. Have a good day ahead.